now we'll study about the anterior abdominal wall part 2 so here we'll discuss about the uh, fascia transversalis uh, and its importance and uh, we'll discuss the arterial supply venous drainage and the cutaneous innervation of the anterior abdominal wall okay so for this uh, video you have to watch our first part that is the anterior abdominal wall layers so layers of fascia layers of muscles that already we have discussed there so please go through that uh, video then uh, it will be easy to understand about this part 2 so here we will start about uh, uh, this image you can see over here that um, this is the, the uh, transversalis fascia that is the layer of connective tissue um, uh, found deep to the transversus abdominis and the fascia it is actually continuous with the uh, thoracolumbar fascia uh, posteriorly uh, that, that is a fascia of the diaphragm uh, superiorly and the uh, iliac and the pelvic fascia inferiorly okay here the two inferior thickenings uh, of the uh, transversalis fascia from the iliopubic tract and uh, interfobular ligament that uh, run alongside and below the inguinal ligament uh, respectively so the fascia is uh, continuous with uh, that of the uh, internal uh, uh, spermatic fascia between the transversalis fascia and the parietal uh, peritoneum that lies a layer of the extra peritoneal fat of variable thickness immediately deep uh, lies the parietal peritoneum so the internal surface of the anterior abdominal wall that you can observe over here it is actually uh, lined uh, with transversalis fascia and uh, uh, parietal peritoneum with a, a variable amount of intervening uh, uh, pre-peritoneal fat so peritoneal folds uh, from where uh, the structures uh, uh, tend the peritoneum as they course between uh, it and uh, the transversalis uh, fascia so these folds that include the median umbilical fold that you can uh, here you can see the median umbilical fold and a single midline fold uh, that is actually created by uh, the median umbilical ligament uh, that you will find over here uh, of the uh, uracus so this uracus it is the fatal connection between the bladder and the uh, umbilicus so here you will find another that is medial umbilical fold that you will find over here uh, that is the paired uh, you can see here that is paired folds it actually it is created by the medial umbilical ligament the remnants of the umbilical arteries in the fetus and the lateral umbilical uh, that you can observe over here the lateral umbilical fold that is also paired uh, and it is created by uh, the inferior epigastric vessels so this peritoneal fossa that is actually uh, formed over here in green you can see uh, between the peritoneal folds and uh, uh, are potential sites of the herniation the, uh, the, the protrusion of the viscera uh, through a wall or the tissue right so the fossa include uh, the 
supra vesicle fossa that uh, you can observe over here uh, the supra vesicle fossa between the median and the medial umbilical uh, uh, ligament or the fold you can say medial umbilical fold and the medial inguinal fossa that is uh, commonly known as the inguinal triangle of hessel beck that is uh, found over here so this hessel beck triangle uh, commonly known as between the medial and the uh, lateral umbilical fold okay and uh, the lateral umbilical fossa that will find over here uh, lateral to the lateral umbilical fold that is present over here and the falciform uh, ligament that is a double layered peritoneal reflection between the uh, liver and the uh, anterior abdominal wall that uh, extends uh, superiorly from the umbilicus to the roof of the abdominal cavity and uh, it encloses the round ligament okay so this round ligament is the uh, remnant of the umbilical vein and uh, para umbilical veins now here we will see the vasculature the the abdominal wall uh, that actually receives a complete uh, a complex uh, uh, blood supply from a number of uh, uh, contributing arteries so first we will see the superior branches uh, because here we will find the superior branch the inferior branch the lateral branch so the superior branch here you can see uh, the superior branch it is actually the internal thoracic artery that you can see that you can observe over here that terminate at the level of the sixth uh, uh, coastal cartilage into uh, the superior epigastric artery and the um, musculophrenic artery the superior epigastric artery that runs inferiorly uh, branching and forming an anastomosis with the inferior epigastric artery okay that uh, that you will find here that arises uh, uh, from the uh, external uh, iliac artery and ascends upward and anastomosis with the uh, superior epigastric artery inside the um, uh, rectus sheath uh, so this superior epigastric artery that runs inferiorly branching and forming an anastomosis with the inferior epigastric artery above the umbilicus region okay so here you will find the musculophrenic artery that is the uh, another lateral branch of this internal thoracic artery okay and the lower anterior intercostal artery that offers the uh, contribution to the vascular supply of the abdominal wall uh, through these uh, are less significant than the superior epigastric artery okay so here you will see another branch uh, that is the inferior branch that will find over here that ascends upward and uh, this inferior uh, branch mainly is the inferior epigastric artery that is the branch of the external iliac artery and it anastomoses with the superior epigastric uh, uh, vessel around the umbilicus and apply the anterior abdominal wall so like that uh, you will find the deep circumflex iliac artery that arises from the external uh, iliac artery almost opposite the origin of the inferior epigastric artery it pierces the uh, transverse abdominis to lie behind the internal uh, oblique muscle uh, and the superficial circumflex iliac and uh, superficial epigastric arteries they arises from the femoral artery so this external iliac artery when it crosses the inguinal ligament it uh, changed its name to the femoral artery 
and from this you will find this superior uh, sorry superficial circumflex iliac and uh, superficial epigastric arteries that supply the lower abdominal wall over here okay then uh, we'll see the lateral branches the lateral uh, branch that supply is from the posterior intercostal and the subcostal and the lumbar arteries arising from the thoracic and abdominal aorta and they supply the musculature uh, uh, that accompanies their course running in 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 a neurovascular plane uh, that is deep to the uh, internal oblique muscle like that you will find here the the veins of uh, the abdominal wall so the deep veins of the abdominal wall that accompany the uh, arteries of similar name and uh, drains to the superior drains to the superior and inferior vena cava via the brachiocephalic uh, vein ajagus vein hemiajagus and the common iliac veins so an extensive subcutaneous uh, uh, venous network that drains superiorly to the internal thoracic and the lateral thoracic veins of the thorax and inferiorly to the inferior and superficial epigastric veins so obstruction of the superior or inferior vena cava may alter the venous flow across the abdominal wall that uh, resulting in the development or enlargement of a superficial uh, anastomosis between the axillary and the femoral veins uh, through the thoracoepigastric vein okay here we will see the lymphatic drainage of the abdominal wall so this lymphatic drainage of the abdominal wall that is divided into upper and the lower uh, region by a curved line that is the water set that you can observe over here located between the umbilicus and the coastal margin so from the upper region the lymph drains to the axillary uh, and uh, the para uh, sternal nodes before draining to the right and uh, left jugulo uh, subclavian junction that is the venous angle from the lower region uh, the lymph drains inferiorly uh, to ipsilateral uh, superficial inguinal, inguinal nodes uh, and uh, this drain to external iliac uh, and the common iliac nodes and eventually to the thoracic duct so here we will see the nerves of the abdominal wall mainly the cutaneous nerve and the motor innervations so nerves of the abdominal wall that arise uh, from the the thoracic uh, uh, and the lumbar uh, spinal nerves that uh, and it includes the lower intercostal nerves that is from the T7 to T11 and the subcostal nerve that is the T12 over here of the thorax and uh, the iliohypogastric nerve and the ilio the iliohypogastric nerve of the uh, lumbar plexus that also in included here uh, to innervate to the anterior abdominal wall so here we'll see the dermatomes of the uh, abdominal wall that follow the slope of the ribs uh, that you can observe over here so landmark dermatomes that correspond to uh, visible surfaces feature of the abdominal wall include the T10 uh, uh, cutaneous nerve at the umbilicus in a ligament and uh, top of the uh, pubis that you will find here the L1 uh, cutaneous nerve okay so the T10 that is actually uh, uh, related to the appendix over here so here you will find the McBurney's point so this McBurney's point that is the imaginary line drawn from the ASIS to the umbilicus 
and uh, then you just divide it into uh, two parts uh, by the um, uh, you can say the medial one third part and uh, lateral two third part so the the point over here that will represent the the uh, uh, pain of the appendix that will uh, uh, radiate towards this uh, umbilicus region so pain at the umbilicus region that will uh, reflect the the pain and the inflammation of the appendix okay and uh, any problem with the the compression or the the fracture uh, of or any pathological uh, problem at the level of your l1 uh, vertebra that will uh, radiate the pain towards the inguinal ligament and towards the upper part of the pubis so that will uh, make you the um, easy to diagnose whether uh, uh, there is any problem with the uh, anterior abdominal wall or inside the viscera or that will be the problem at the vertebral level that you can observe nicely with this cutaneous innervation the landmarks so friends here we have completed the uh, whole uh, chapter of your anterior abdominal wall in part 1 and part 2 hope you have enjoyed it so in next video we will discuss about this inguinal region and uh, how the inguinal region is clinically uh, uh, important surgically most important over here because uh, uh, most common uh, clinical uh, problem uh, at the inguinal region is your inguinal hernia uh, that we will discuss uh, in, in our next video so please stay tuned please like share